Yes, well, to all my viewers, thank you so much for sticking around. And in today's video, I just want to introduce to you the produce uh, business. And uh, uh, this is dealing in agricultural uh, produce, most especially uh, grains. It can be beans, uh, peas, uh, rice, and a lot of other things. So, what are the considerations that you, what are the things that you need to consider in order to start uh, a serious business anyway is a serious business a viable is it a profitable business i want to assure you if you do a good market research and strategically locate your business with good uh, marketing plans you'll make it in serious business and at any amount of money you can start operating your serious business. One thing that you need to put into consideration before I continue is that people eat every day, people get sick every day, people travel every day is not a valid market research. Because at some point you'll find that people like eating what you are selling, but they are restricted by a factor of affordability. They cannot afford to buy your product. So if you intend to just sell to just introduce such a product to a, cert a certain category of people that cannot afford the prices, automatically you might end up operating in two losses. So, if you want to start a produce or serious a business, these are the things you have to put into consideration. Number one, look for the market. You should know which category of people are going to be your customers. Whom, whom are you going to sell your products to? And uh, most times, there are people who strategically locate their businesses. For example, people who deal in cereals or grains, they supply beans, they supply uh, maize flour. You find sometimes they supply rice. And I like, you find they have a contract of delivering to schools. So that is being so strategic beyond just looking for these customers who buy at a small quantity, who buy one kg, two kilo, uh, two kgs. So you can strategically locate your, uh, your business and try to supply large quantities to different institutions, including uh, schools. Number two, pick the produce you are going to trade in. In fact, there must be a certain level of specialization. I'm not meaning that you need to deal in all, only one type of agricultural produce or grain or anything, but you should know which ones you need to bring in your business and which ones you should not bring. Which ones you have to bring in large quantity and which ones you don't need to bring in large quantity. This is to avoid overstocking. Products that spend long in your businesses tend to delay your profitability and sometimes there are also risks associated to those losses because they can go bad anything can happen to them when they are still in the store we have pests that can destroy them so if you stay with your grains in your store for a long time you are increasing your risk so you need to do a proper market research to understand which type of grains go faster so that you can stock more of that those produce so how do you know that this type of grain or agricultural produce goes faster than the other you must be having proper records keeping you need to know when do a certain type of grain goes faster than the other how much the quantity that people buy within a specific period of time so that you know how much you need to stock to avoid overstocking. Number three, find your supplier. In most cases, these grain businesses are strategically located in trading centers and towns because in there, there are no people who grow anything. People don't participate in agriculture. These suppliers make sure they are not from within because those people from within already sell those grains at an increased price. So if you do booking with farmers or local stores, you'll be getting those agricultural produce and grains or cereals 
at a relatively reduced price. This will help you to favorably compete with those people you'll be selling with in the towns or in your market or in your strategic location where you'll have placed your business. Make sure get a genuine good supply. And in most cases, try to do some booking because prices keep changing. So if you book for agricultural produce this season, make sure there is some deposit for the next time because at some point you might reach there and you have already made appointment with your customers and all of a sudden you cannot get them. Someone else takes over. So make sure you get genuine and reliable suppliers to always supply you your cereals or grains. Number four, get a store. Strategically locate your business in a town where you know that most of the people do not participate in growing those grains. So at that point, you will be able to make money. It is a sure deal because, as I told you, people don't eat every day, but in towns, people tend to afford those things because they don't have any other alternative of survival. It's not like in the village where someone fails to eat this and runs to that to to something free from his or her garden. In town, by all means, you have to buy. So strategize yourself and place your to store around town. Make sure don't create a very big distance for transportation of you from your place of work to your store because that is an additional cost also that can also lead you into some losses. Number five, advertise your business. You can use word of mouth and also encourage referrals. If those people buy from you and they understand that you are selling your produce at a relatively reduced price compared to others, try to ask them to give referrals to friends so that maybe you can create a lead from there and make sure get detailed contacts of your customers so that it will be helping you when you stop you can be texting your customers that maybe i have stocked new beans i have stocked this type of rice and also whenever the prices go down or go up you keep in touch in touch with your customers so that you become so much reliable and resourceful in communication most small business people do not do that. So if you come out with that unique, if you come out with that uniqueness of constantly communicating with your customers, I believe that you're going to be exceptional in that business. You're going to be so reliable and customers will stick with you. Well, thank you so much and I wish you good luck in your journey of serious business. For details, you can inbox me. We can discuss more in case you have picked interest and you'd like to venture into serious business. Well, I remind Michael Motegeki. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share this message to a friend. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.